Good morning. Today is Sunday, April 19th, 2020, and it's about 9 a.m. here in Pasadena, California. So here's this week's update. First, the U.S. Mint has stopped printing uh, currency and coinage, which I think is pretty amazing. Uh, that doesn't mean that they've stopped printing money by simply using the computer terminal at the Fed, but I find it's fascinating that they've stopped actually coining uh, money. I don't recall that ever happening in the past. Uh, Zoom is now worth more than American Airlines, Expedia, and Hilton combined. I think that message speaks for itself. Uh, you're going to see a drastic reduction in travel of all sorts, uh, and the use of video conferencing as a principal tool. So Zoom is the market leader, and it makes sense to me that would be the case. The ASM China survey uh, has certainly revealed some very interesting uh, input, I would say. It seems that some people aren't nearly as patriotic as they would outwardly claim. Um, I'll be talking more about what this is all about in the coming weeks and months. It's not for discussion right now. But uh, suffice it to say, this is the most interesting survey result I've seen so far. XFL, uh, we still feel that's the main target uh, for our funding operations. Uh, you know, the putting out the videos and such to get leads in from leagues. Uh, the XFL is inside of bankruptcy now. This is the second time they failed, and, and that's going to make it nearly impossible, if not totally impossible, to get funding again, even without the current economic crisis. So um, we're going to look to reach out to the people who are handling the bankruptcy and the principals in the company in the C-suite to make our proposition um, as a special effort, not just as a broadcast out to all of the people who have responded so far from the uh, the LinkedIn farming efforts. Uh, the ex the sports vote manifesto release date July 4, 2020. Uh, subtitle will most likely be the new Marshall Plan or a new Marshall Plan. Not sure which one of those. Um, Alper and I do agree that's a good comparison. So if you don't know what the Marshall Plan is, uh, do your research. There's plenty about that on the internet. But I, I, I do believe that's what we're up to here. Uh, Oil-based economy, big trouble. Uh, oil under $20 a barrel, even after OPEC slashing output in a big fight with Russia and other oil producers. Uh, that's going to affect everything that is connected to petroleum, uh, cars, airplanes, all of that stuff. The public is realizing pretty quickly that the whole notion of commuting and all of this travel that we've been conditioned to believe has to happen is actually not necessary. Um, that is not going to go away when the problem goes away. The current situation abates. It's going to change the way people behave on a permanent basis. They're going to look at their finances and realize maybe they don't want a car payment and an insurance payment. They don't want to commute hours a day like you do here in Los Angeles for no reason. Um, Obviously, you're still going to have mechanized plants and things that require physical attendance, but we live in an inter information economy, and it's, it's not mandated that you have a big concrete building somewhere that you have to pay for and maintain to get the job done. And again, with the stigma of work at home basically disappearing because even top-line talk show people are now doing their shows from their basements and attics and that's really going to break the public perception of of you know something special about a studio or something special about being at work um, I do think this is long lasting and it's going to utterly devastate the uh, petroleum economy on an ongoing basis not just uh, in a dip for the moment that doesn't mean there'll be surges here and there but if the oil producers can't get the price over $20 a barrel, uh, even after fighting over it, that's devastating because most oil producers can't produce that at a profit. And uh, very few, uh, like Saudi Arabia is about the only one. So uh, they're going to be producing at a loss, and that's just not going to work. Um, so sports shares uh, site shut down on schedule. Reason for that, I'm going to go through this one more time. Uh, it is a cost 
uh, to maintain the site, and, and it's actually not that. It's the cost that it, it t time it takes for me to develop those things and produce them and, and ship them out and all that. So we have other means of funding now that are working fine. Um, I do appreciate everyone who's participated in the past. As I said, it kept us funded from the summer of last year, and I do have orders uh, pending from about the last eight weeks. I'm waiting to see the shutdown, um, you know, when, when Los Angeles is going to be uh, back to normal, and that's the point at which I'm going to uh, get the orders uh, shipped out. So thank you for your patience and, of course, for your participation. Um, those of you who have been part of that, it has uh, been a really productive funding program for us when we really needed it. And as I said, now we have other means uh, to support ASM that don't require as much out of me. Personally, I need to be focusing on this lead, gener lead generation for leagues and getting the order book filled. So uh, that's the condition of that. So everybody will receive the orders that are, um, that are not yet delivered as soon as I get a uh, green light, basically, on, on the lockdown here. And then I'll have a shipping date for everybody, and you'll be contacted. So, again, thank you very much for participating. Uh, you kept us going until we got here, and here is where we need to be, especially in view of this crazy um, situation we find ourselves in with the entire world and, of course, sports being being locked down. It's, it's amazing. Okay, so um, sports bidding bills are failing everywhere. Uh, I called that one several weeks ago. I said it's untenable to be putting forth uh, sports betting bills in this environment, and that is materializing. Um, they're dying in committee. They're not being put up before the session ends. So not much progress going to happen there in this legislative uh, year. I don't expect to see much in general for reasons I've already outlined previously. We're going to shelve the... Uh, let's see. No, that's not it. Dubai. Okay, so I had a reach out by... Uh, a gentleman who is looks very credible that's responsible for an investment fund in sports in Dubai, among other places, and has a portfolio that is uh, literally filled with every valuable, mainly worldwide soccer team you could name. Uh, I'm not indicating anything other than that's what happened. It's not, it's not a product of the, uh, the farming. It was actually an active contact to me, and I'm getting those pretty regularly now as a result of, of what we've already done in terms of making contacts with people. So, um, you know, don't see that as any immediate funding solution, but it's it's an active conversation I have going now, and it will continue, and we'll see where it goes. Uh, he did request a full uh, package on what it is that we're doing, what we're looking for, and, and to see if we couldn't can't work out some kind of a partnership or some kind of collaboration. And, in fact, uh, he's involved right now in... Uh, doing something very similar like a GoFundMe kind of patch for the sports world. So we're really aligned on that um, idea. Obviously, I'm not going to mention any names for reasons previously disclosed until there is uh, a deal and that we make a public announcement, and that will be the case with everything. Lesson learned from the few of you out there who seem hell-bent on trying to mess up the, the results of this for everybody else. So that won't be happening. Uh, we're going to shelve the, um, okay, so 12 to 18 months. Listen, uh, this is not going to change. You're not going to see anything close to normal return in, in terms of uh, anything uh, for 12 months, I, easily 12 months. The best uh, information out there amongst people who know what they're talking about and have been doing this their whole lives is uh, NFL in the fall without fans in the stands is the most likely thing to happen. I know baseball is scrambling around trying to get something worked out, but I think the clock's going to run out on them on that. Whereas the the football season, there's enough prep time to put in all the safety measures and do everything necessary to, um, to, to get it online for broadcast. Because again, most people don't go to the games because they're not near a stadium. They also don't, they can't afford the, even if they are, they can't afford the tickets. So the main thing is to get it back on broadcast. And I, I think that's what you will see. So to drive towards that expectation, I think is, is, is wise. 
We're going to shelve the EVE Sports plans for now. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, the ASM market is sustaining itself fine without any games being played. As I've said before, some days it actually goes higher than it has been in the past when games are being played. The quarterly dividends do still apply, so that that's there. Um, you know that that still happens every quarter. So uh, people are still trading pretty actively, and and the only reason we were looking at esports was to maybe bridge the gap, but I don't believe the gap is going to be more than a football season uh, coming up. So with that in mind, and also there is some possibility of it uh, turning us into a less serious looking proposition because, you know, esports is still looked at as, you know, kind of a game and not, not a different kind of game and not as serious as physical sports. And there's some uh, reputational perception risk for us in being uh, looked at, especially early on, as not a real market because we allow people to invest in video games. I mean, I can see that that storyline coming out, um, and I don't think that's helpful. So the only thing we were going to get out of this really was engagement and buying a little time. But looking closer at things, I think NFL's on the way, and we can wait for that. So we're gonna we're gonna let that go for now. Uh, managing sports risk. So. There was a story uh, that came out about insurance and the in inability to ever get pandemic insurance again in the sports world and probably at large, not just the sports world. Um, that's a devastating thing, and that's one of the reasons for the SRI, uh, the Sports Risk Index. Um, you know, we slip into that gap. It, it really strengthens our, our position that that's a valid financial product that, in fact, right now would be saving billions of dollars of losses. I think it'd be a little hard to do right at this moment because the market has absorbed most of it. But if it would have been uh, ahead of time, uh, a lot of that risk would have been laid off of the, uh, you know, from people who don't want it to people who are willing to take it. So we're seeing a, a very uh, significant public demonstration of why our products, I would say in this case, more the SRI and less ASM product would would solve that problem but a little bit of both that may be 75 80 percent sri 20 percent asm asm is definitely much more retail focused mlb minor leagues uh, teams as a potential funding target that was an idea that i received i just made a note here that i have seen some of our linkedin contacts are part of the minor league system so they're going to get um they're going to get our information pretty soon here once i get all the leads loaded into a, a CRM. Okay, so there I produced two videos. Um, the first one is I would describe more as uh, a stat, you know, the current condition of things. It's sort of a ho hum kind of reading the tone of the moment. Uh, a couple days ago, I rethought that, and I don't think that's going to sell people. I mean, while it's you know, sell a, sell them on the idea that that they should list their teams with us. You know, sad doesn't really sell. Excitement is what sells. You know, um, optimism sells. So, in favor of that, I produce a second one. I'm not going to take the first one down, and you you can circulate it if you wish. But the the main one is the one that I put up yesterday. It's already it already has more views than the other one does, and I think it more. Um, First, it outlines the proposition in, in the video text itself. I think it's more forward-looking and is going to be more exciting to people who see it and will generate the leads we're looking for. So if you want to circulate something and help us out in getting in uh, prospects, you know, at this point getting prospects to land on that form, then please circulate the one that's, uh, that I produced yesterday. You'll see it's the main featured video when you go to the sportsvote.com, which lands on our YouTube page. So, um, yeah, DraftKings is looking at uh, doing their IPO into this environment, which I think is bananas, but it's probably due to the fact that they need money. Uh, it's a shell cheater reverse IPO kind of thing, which I do think was going to cause problems with the regulators once they do it because, once again, you know, you cannot – uh, have a fe it, it, the IPO process is SEC and all of that, and still you have the Wire Act and all of that. So while they may pull it off and collect some cash, I think the back end 
um, blowback is going to come from the regulators because you've just floated a company that still is not legal at the federal level because of the Wire Act. And that court case, while stalled because courts are stalled ed- in general, it's not going to go away. When everything gets unclogged and the priorities are set, uh, you're going to see a return to that case. Uh, Justice Department is not going to back off because of the pandemic. They're just going to, the court system is going to back off because they, they can't handle it uh, right now and they're only dealing with uh, emergency actions. So I think that while they may pull it, the point is, while they, mo- I wouldn't do it now if I were them, but okay, fine. I think you're going to see a backfire. Uh, gambling numbers down 50 to 80 percent, both in near-term and long-term projections. I've gone over this reasoning why in prior uh, communication, so I'm going to leave that there. Look for yourself. Uh, those are the numbers. Um, okay, so the videos, the lip, yeah, the, the title of it is Liberate Sports. That's the one I want you to circulate. Please do take the time to drop that in your feeds and stuff and pass it around where we're just looking to get intake form uh, people that are connected to leagues that want to entertain the idea of listing their uh, teams on our market. So it's really important to get that out as far as you can. So if you have a stake in this, please do what you can to get that out. Again, it's the Liberate Sports uh, video. So um, China, art culture. So I've been studying up on China quite a bit. And one of the things uh, I've said many times, especially here to Ace, just talking to him about it, is once the Chinese figure out marketing, which marketing is certainly more art than science, uh, we're in trouble because they already make everything. And the only real gap in uh, why they're not us, basically, and they haven't taken over everything, is they don't quite understand marketing and advertising. Um, it's their, their advertising, their, their slogans, their brand names, they're all very prim, primi, primitive, I guess I would say. And that's just not going to work. Certainly not going to work on selling the U.S. Uh, and many other places. It's too technical. And that's really a product of the culture, um, you know, probably more from the communist revolution and all of that. But they're getting back in touch with that, the art side of things, and they're really starting to make new art and and all of and that's becoming a more important thing inside the system so i think that that's a that's a signal to watch in terms of how far china is going to get with everything because once they get the marketing they already make everything so once they get the marketing figured out um really there's only one thing left uh, and that's you know i've said before america is really about imagination and risk taking and creativity so you know what will be left, I guess, is the risk-taking part. Uh, they are averse to that, so we got a little bit of that left. But when the creative side takes over, um, it's going to put a big dent because that's really all we're doing now is we're just remarketing stuff that is made over there with our branding and packaging and wrapping and, and creative uh, side of it. So look out. That's my point. Um, okay, so I, I, we took 13 surveys on SurveyMonkey um, over the last year on all kinds of various topics. If you are a program member, which means that you've contributed any amount of money since December 25th, 2019 until the present and forward, um, you can request copies of this raw information. Now, the, the conditions are that you do not disclose it to anybody, but I will literally give you the entire file of all of those responses so you can see that stuff under the condition of non-disclosure. Um, I think there's some very fascinating information in there uh, that you that you you have a right to see if, if you're keeping you know uh, ASM alive at this point. So I will provide that to you if you ask for it. You uh, need to write a message to uh, the sports vote at gmail.com and ask for it. And if I see that you are uh, a contributor since December of twenty of twenty December twenty fifth two thousand nineteen. Then I'll send you a copy of it, all of it. Okay, so a couple of interesting things here. Um, I produced some business cards back in uh, Texas in about two thousand ten, two thousand nine, two thousand ten, and I don't think many of you have seen this, but some really fascinating stuff has happened regarding that. First one I would point to is the um, I produced this card for the sports vote. You can see that. 
Well, if you look closely, you can see that it says end fan lockouts. Now, at the time, 10 years ago, I didn't have any idea what that meant. Um, but I felt compelled to put it on this card. It's pretty stunning that this now fits into the moment in time because the fans are locked out. <laughs> so make of that what you will. Here's a couple of the other ones. Um, this is the card for the uh, the nonprofit. You see that? And then uh, I had put up the the wiki site is still there. We just haven't really got to that. That's a later project, but you can see the slow. These are all produced ten years ago. And then this is the uh, this is the company card, which was also produced ten years ago, and you can see. Uh, there the the imagery and especially on the back um, the future of sports and finance so it's not something that we came up with yesterday and then um, yeah the fan lockouts part that's really the that's the thing that's most shocking to me is because even when I printed it on the cards it, at the time Really, we were. Th my thought was that it was locked out in terms of being able to financially participate in your team, but it felt kind of clunky and goofy. Not, not, not so much anymore. Okay, so seventeen hundred and uh, plus LinkedIn con connections, growing every single day organically, even without any active effort. Um, getting five to ten per day, doing nothing. Uh, we will get back to the farming process, but I need to first get to the people who already asked. So there's almost 900 data cards now. We're loading those into a, into a, an, a basically a CRM, into a mailer uh, system so that I can manage these, uh, these communications. So that's going on literally right now, formatting the data so I can get out the uh, first wave. I did run a test of about a hundred um, connections yesterday and it opened up already seven or eight conversations just from those again LinkedIn doesn't really have a lot of activity on the weekend although I I'm seeing it tick up because everybody's home all the time I think people still se separate that a lot of people separate that as that's my nine to five Monday through Friday and they don't deal with it on the weekends because I get surges on 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 Mondays but it's starting, the curves are starting to change because everybody's at home and everybody's pretty much working when they need to work. So um, anyway, that's where that stands. It's looking really good. I'm, I'm already getting positive results. Um, I've got one, one contact who said that they're going to, it's a person who gets featured on LinkedIn's homepage all the time as a featured editor, also involved in um, uh, pandemic uh, mitigation. Not, not recently. This is, this is like part of her career lifetime careers in this type of thing and she's a first level contact of mine that I connected through Hero Club some time ago and she's gonna pass the video along to a sports editor at one of her um, one of her friends is in sports media gonna pass to the editor and see what see what they think about what we've got going on here and also I have uh, three or four different uh, maybe seven or eight now uh, different conversations of people that are have looked at the video or are looking at it and and communicating with me so that's already like seven eight percent just from yesterday okay so we have uh, this this one I forgot about uh, it literally showed up in the mail if you can see that uh, it showed up in the mail yesterday so <laughs> Uh, kind of amazing. Sports investing pays lifetime dividends. It's in the principal register. So that's our trademark now. Um, yeah, totally forgot about this one. So that's granted. Uh, I said that the the downturn, uh, this downturn, I'm going to stick with this, uh, worse than 100 years. Uh, alongside, it's very interesting that worst economic downturn in 100 years, 100 years ago was the worst gambling scandal. 100 years ago was the uh, the the um, so you had gambling scandal, the uh, financial crash, I'm missing one, and oh and uh, the flu, Spanish flu. So there's three three things that have happened a hundred years ago that almost simultaneously are happening again. I mean I don't I guess gambling scandals are pretty regular things here these days, 
but I just I it's hard to not see some connection there and it's it's pretty cr crazy all right so the financial numbers I told Albert this and he he would confirm this to you about th two three weeks ago that um, we're gonna have a four to five trillion dollar deficit as a result of this crash uh, respectable sources are already saying four trillion uh, deficit this fiscal year I think that it, it's gonna go up um, I would put it at five to six trillion all they're doing is just printing not printing in the presses because those are shut down and they don't do it that way anyway they're just increasing the float okay of the uh, US dollar just click 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 they're gonna have to keep doing that because they don't have another game that's the only game they've got and this is the actions of failed states failed states do this stuff so why won't we fail well the only reason that we haven't already failed um, actually from several mistakes ago is that the dollar has reserve currency status which basically allows us to inflate the entire global currency system everybody pays for our mistakes that's basically how it works we'll see how long that lasts uh, this is this is the biggest one ever I have my doubts uh, this one is gonna stick I don't know what that means I don't know where, where that's going but uh, I don't know they're gonna be able to print their way out of this one and you know our proposition of the new sports economy again caught some grief on that concept when not grief but just what it, what, what what happens when it's no longer new right so uh, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon I think the word new sports account is gonna work and it makes so much more sense now than it ever did so I would say again putting the same message out I, I feel like Bernie Sanders for as long as I can remember the only way out of this the only way out of this is a new asset class and by monetizing sports performance that's what we do that has not been done gambling is poaching okay poaching sports performance when you're allowed to invest in sports performance that is a new asset class and that will it is such an enormous potential in terms of the marketplace while I wouldn't go so far as to say that it would pull the uh, American economy out of the whole hole in the near term it will stop the bleeding it'll well it'll slow the bleeding pretty fast but here's the condition it depends on what it's denominated in if it's dollar denominated it will draw in dollars which is which is what will help the United States whatever that base currency is is going to be the be the main benefactor of what we're doing so if our platform is sold to the Chinese and repriced in their currency they're gonna get it the benefits okay this is why this is a much bigger question than it appears to be and the responses that I receive it's an awful lot of you out there that talk all patriotic until it's cash out and then all of a sudden your patriotism disappears so uh, very revealing information in that so is it possible that we sell it to China and re-denominate re, re, uh, it in their currency we'll see you know we'll see I, I I would not like that I don't think that's the right way to go uh, but at the end of the day it's going to be a shareholder decision isn't it so um, there you have it you know I would rather it be this country I would rather it be in the dollar I would rather you know support us than than China but you know we'll see so think about that that's that's a very big thing and I think it's uh, it's well first I have very high level contacts in the people People's Republic of China I can get this in front of people who will take it seriously so this is something we need to be thinking about um, again I would rather it be an American company denominated in dollars but I don't know that that's my decision at the end of the day so uh, that's it for now. Uh, stay safe with your, your family and your friends. Please take the lockdown seriously. Uh, politicians are not doctors, okay? Politicians are not scientists, okay? So pay attention to the people who've been doing this their whole lives, not to the people who are trying to get reelected or trying to put some kind of political position out there for whatever reasons, okay? So thank you very much for your time, and I will speak with you again uh, next weekend. Bye now.